picture my musket down. Yeah, they are. Uh -huh. <laughs> Ain't right, Pietro. I'd give you stomach out there. Tell her what was the child's name? Is it on there? Bill. Joe Anna. Oh, I see. I see. Joe Anna Gore. Four years departed this line. 27th of December. 18th of December. She's four years old. She said a line up to the head of her foot. Yeah. You know, it's a little bit this way. Something that wouldn't be a big deal now. Yeah. But they, uh, the right. wood is which, shorter, which right? Way are they, which way are they laying? This way. This way. This is the baby. So this marker was put, put down when? Cleaning this off. This one is on what's there, but this one is right on in here. Uh, Wards. Mm-hmm. Ben Barclay, Benjamin Barclay. Wife. Uh, uh, wife right. Uh, we put a, what we put a Confederate? Better uh, marker. marker down for him. He, he married uh, Amelia uh, Ward, who was a daughter to... Uh, it's amazing when you get into it how far it goes back and then comes back to other ones. Martin, that's one corner, and the other corner is just on the other side of that tree. Cedar. And then this is the brick wall. You didn't find any more brick wall coming down there. Now you get out under the cedar. It does go the other side of the cedar. Yes, sir, right back here. You see this flag. Yes, sir. The brick wall looks kind of like this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, what's does anybody know which way east is? Well, I would assume the sun would be pretty close to the east. Yeah, well, that's what I would think. That'd be east, but that's pretty much east. Well, in them days, they might not have known what the <laughs> drain was. Laying out, he probably just came well, out A friend of mine told me that uh, if God can raise them up, he can turn them around. So just, you know, just whichever way. <laughs> Well, I've uh, <laughs> never heard that. Well, but you, uh, what was that friend's name? <laughs> <laughs> Let me see. Let me see. It's come to me from at least third hand. I don't know if I can credit the person or not. Y'all recognize Okay, Doc Bennett told me that. Doc Bennett. You know he worked for uh, McBride's funeral home? Yeah. And he said one of their graves is so great. He said one of their graves is coming back. Yep. Probably gonna be down this range. No, not. Nobody put it back 
Is that an evergreen? Is that green? Yes, sir. That, mm -hmm. That's what's called Vinca Minor. V I N C A Minor. Periwinkle. Uh, yeah, yeah. uh, it has a, a beautiful little purple bloom on it. And uh, it has a t terrific root system. And all of this has undoubtedly, they put out some of this on these graves here. Mm -hmm. Probably Joanna's grave, her daughter, well, had that cedar planted bit. and mm -hmm. some of this well, stuff put on, on her grave in, in 1835. Mm -hmm. well, you can see now this, mm -hmm. how much it's this stuff has there. spread out in the woods. It's almost 100 mm -hmm. yards in all directions since mm -hmm. in that period of time. Mr. Owen, Jerry Owens, uh, you know, he's, he's all the Confederate 
graves in, in Tippecanoe Benton County. He said you've been to but virtually every cemetery has this in Tippecanoe County. Oh, those old wood cemeteries do. Mm -hmm. They yeah. sure do. People must have that must have been the thing to do because yeah. they sure plant them in it. Yeah. In the woods, yeah, yeah, the family cemetery. Well, once it gets established, uh, it's. Yes, sir. Yeah. It's the Beck Cemetery there. over in Ashland had this. Yes, sir. Yeah. Had a lot of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Was that to keep the grass down? Yeah, the uh, women used to yeah. keep it from eroding, you know. Well, just not only it. that, but the beauty of it. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's it's like a, a good that's, that's as tall carpet. as it gets, and then it flowers pretty <laughs> no, that, blue purple. Now, I told you this was called Vinca Minor. There is a Vinca Major, which is essentially the same plant, except it's just got bigger leaves and a bigger bloom. Mm -hmm. Hmm. There's some of that up around the house, lodging on. This is what you normally see in the cemetery. Right. Uh -huh. The small leaves. <coughs> Sorry? Yeah, the, the small leaves is what you normally see around cemeteries. Yeah, right. Well, right. <coughs> What do you want to? What do you want to be buried? Do you want to be inside the wall, or do you well, want to be? Well, uh, I just tell him. I, 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 I don't mind if you make my picture. I just want to cut. I had chosen. I told my wife, right, right there. Okay, on, okay. On, by this on cedar. Okay. cedar. Okay. But only because I did not want to be buried here. I didn't want to disturb their their mm -hmm. grave. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. But now, where it, I you. know where their grave is, I might decide to be buried. Come over inside the wall. Mm -hmm. Isn't that something? That, that, do you have any idea when they I built come this over here once, once a day. Uh, I shiny come through, one right the trail through, through, right, through the woods. Uh -huh. Me and my three dogs come no. over. <laughs> <laughs> I come over <laughs> and I talk yeah. to them. Yeah. Wait a minute, get somebody else. I want and, you to tell him what's going on. Tell him what's going on and ask for. Is it fine? Thank you. <laughs> oh, okay, Doctor Taylor. Let me. Uh, I'm sort of lost here. Uh, the people that buried here. You are descendants. No, no. You're not a descendant. No. Okay, no, okay, no, okay, no. okay. No, I grew up out at Randolph, a okay. little town, 12 miles from here. Okay, okay. And I, I never saw this house. I'm just gonna pray. Everybody. All the time that I was growing up, I had no, no interest in it always heard it referred to as the old haunted house down south of Pontotoc. Mm -hmm. And there's a ghost story. I'll, mm -hmm. I'll tell, you, tell you about that. Okay. And, and uh, I, well, as I said, I was a neurosurgeon and I was practicing and teaching neurosurgery down at the medical center in Jackson. And family, and I, my family, I'm not Went down to the Natchez pilgrimage, you know. <laughs> Natchez uh, has a like annual pilgrimage with all their old antebellum homes. Uh, unusual number of uh, antebellum homes survived the war. The war in Natchez. The story that I have heard is the reason for the, so many of them surviving the war in Natchez as compared to the rest of the South was that, Sam, you'll have to excuse me for saying this, right. but <laughs> the story was that the ladies of Natchez, the mistresses of all these antebellum homes, were unusually kind to the occupying Union forces. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so they didn't burn the house. <laughs> all right. We do what we have to do. Yeah, they, yeah. <laughs> Until, uh, and sometimes yeah. it works. <laughs> until, until you're in that situation, you don't know. You don't know what you will do. That's right. You sure so don't. So I went, I went, my family and I went down to the Natchez Pilgrimage, yep. and I just became enthralled with the, the history back of all those houses. And, and then I could started kicking myself for not. When I was growing up at Randolph, 12 miles from here, not even having enough interest in it to, to come down and see it. Mm -hmm. So I found out that the Fontaine family lived here. Mr. Fontaine was a lawyer here in, in Pontotoc for 62 years. And Ms. Fontaine was a, a professor of English at the old Chickasaw College for Women, which sat uptown Pontotoc where the hospital now stands. It was a big, beautiful building and apparently was an was a outstanding uh, women's educational facility for years and years. And 
Ms. Fontaine had been professor of English at that college and was she was dean of it for uh, two terms. So I, after seeing all, all those antebellum homes in Natchez, my interest in antebellum homes went skyrocket. <laughs> And I started doing a lot of reading and research on all antebellum homes in Mississippi. And I found out that the old haunted house down south of Pontotoc that I grew up 12 miles from but had never seen was probably the most historical antebellum home in Mississippi. And I'm not just whistling Dixie. I, 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 can, I can back up that statement because the ma main reason I that feel that way is that old Robert Gordon had a uh, just a massive contact with the Chickasaw Indians uh, that all the other antebellum homes around Mississippi they, they didn't have the Indian history that that Lockenvar had uh, and I uh, found out that the Fontaine family lived here and by, by that time, I had found some some real good material down on the history of the house down in the Department of Archives and History in Jackson. And I even found Robert Gordon's personal diary mm. that he kept as his record of all of his slave purchases and all of his slave sales, all of his land dealings. He, he uh, had the ownership of 300,000 acres of land Ooh. after the Treaty of, after the Treaty of Pontotoc Creek. Now, I, I, I say ownership of it. I, I, I didn't believe that when I first heard it. But I researched it out, and I found out that he and a man by the name of John Vale had what they called a land holding company. And that, that was after the Treaty of Pontotoc Creek uh, in 1832, in which the Chickasaw Indians ceded mm -hmm. the last of their territory, 6.4 million acres of land, to the uh, uh, government. And the town of Pontotoc did, did not exist at that time, but the United States government plan to set up a federal land office at the at what they considered to be near the center part of this 6.4 million acres of land for public auction of this 6.4 million acres of land. And of course, when when word got out that they were going to set up the federal land office up up here for Pontotoc developed. Uh, there was a huge influx of people coming in to take advantage of this mm -hmm. cheap land. And I found records of uh, a lot of the land sales and so forth. I found the original deed to Lockenvar property from an Indian, Chickasaw Indian woman by the name of Molly Gunn and old Robert Gordon the old Scott that built the house, he bought the section of six, 640 acres, a square mile mm -hmm. of uh, land from this Chickasaw Indian woman, Molly Gunn. Mm -hmm. And I found the original deed in yeah. oh, uh, the oh, Chantry oh. Clerk's office. That he signed, huh? and Robert yeah. paid three dollars and a half an acre for this land. Mm -hmm. and, and, mm -hmm. and you'll have to take my word for it. That was probably at least twice as much as most of the land was going for. Mm -hmm. So somebody was probably bidding against him mm -hmm. for this property. This is the primal. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, but uh, it's, 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 what about in Pontiac was the old federal uh, land office? Do you know the, yeah, the geographical? Yeah, 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 it's it's uh, up inside the city limits. There's a it's historical. Oh, market. there's a marker there. Okay, marker there. I've got several. The old patent book is it Ripley uh, that came from down yep. here, of course, it's, they it's, got it on the internet. It's a very now. insignificant marker. <laughs> I, I, it's shameful that they don't have it better marked. See, the Pontotoc did not exist. They just mm -hmm. chose this spot for, to set up the federal land 
office for dispersal of all those millions of acres of land. Which is what stayed and the then the huge the influx of people come in and suddenly, all, almost overnight, so, yeah. it's a big town. There's only there's only really been three owners to this property. Absolutely. Yeah. The Gordons, Fontaine. the Fontaines, and you in 1966. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. three, a hundred and yeah. all these years, man, it's just three owners on this. Do you land. ever hear why they put the uh, cemetery at this location instead of closer to the house? Uh, no, no, I didn't. Uh, I didn't know about the cemetery, but I was, know, uh, I was talking to Miss Fontaine when I, when might I have been first visited the house, mm. and she said, there's a cemetery over on the next hill. And then she told me about when they moved in in 26, the uh, fine iron fence and the markers and someone stole all, mm. all of it. Mm. And she, uh, I had her to describe as best she could to me where the cemetery was. And I was able to Did come you? over, come over. It was grown up terribly. Oh, yeah. Didn't have these little pig trails in here. Didn't have anything <laughs> here except just vines, vines, vines. Needle in a haystack. Yeah. But I, I, mm. I found some of this brick wall here, mm. so I knew that was it. Mm. And uh, I've cleaned it off. And kept kept it cleaned off. We know how much sand. trouble that is. That's probably Root, slave made. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, sure. yeah. Yeah. Will you go to the house and see the front porch? Yeah, it's, the same, back porch. it's the same size brick there. Mm -hmm. I think they're a little bit larger than the, our normal. Mm -hmm. yeah, 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 that's the way they were at Holly Springs brick too. You yeah. know, the ones yeah. that big cemetery had larger. A keel here on the place? Sir. You oh, reckon yeah. they had a keel here on the place? Yeah. Yeah. Probably probably did. Did. yeah. That's one thing him too. That's probably made out of the soil that's around this place. Oh, yeah. yeah, sure. It's red, red clay. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. mm -hmm. I tried to get them to lick them to see if they were salty. He said they had salt in them. Yeah, <laughs> you know, you know, I'm glad. I'm, well, yeah, now that everybody's just, yeah, tell I'm him that story. Uh, uh, story. Okay. Up when, on Ward Park by the house. When uh, when I was talking with Miss Fontaine about the house and, and dealing with her and buying it, she. Uh, said when we moved here in 26, there was the old brick kitchen where they did all their cooking. It was there uh, just very near the back of the house. And she, t she told me that when, when they moved in in 26, uh, the old brick kitchen was completely intact. It had two huge, uh, or a huge fireplace at each end of it with Dutch ovens around uh, the fireplaces. She said all the iron work, the big pots, the huge mm -hmm. pots well, that they could swing over the fire and mm -hmm. the fireplace yeah. was there. So it was a, it would have been a jewel mm -hmm. to have had all that mm -hmm. thing intact. Mm -hmm. But she said they, they used the yard as a as a cow pasture, had a barbed wire fence that came up and abutted onto that uh, uh, kitchen. Uh, structure. Kitchen. Yeah. And they, when they were making these brick, for some reason they put some uh, some salt salt in to make it dry hard or hmm. uh, for some reason enough salt that their cows licked holes <laughs> in the wall of this, of this wonderful old structure mm. to the extent that okay. a windstorm blew it down. Uh, mm. they just Doctor, put that fence out. All they would have to have done was move that the fence, fence out. Yeah. a little right. section of the fence <laughs> over five feet yeah. Yeah. And, and that structure would still be there. <laughs> Miss Fontaine told me that Senator Bilbo uh, Think very highly of Senator Bilbo. He was governor too, you know. Yeah. I said, I just want to Before our time. Say, I think Senator Bilbo probably set Mississippi back about 50 years, really. <laughs> but anyway, one year, for some reason, Senator Bilbo had his summer office in the town of Pontotoc. And, and I've confirmed that this w was a fact. And he came out. Miss Fontaine told me this that when when uh, he was, he came out to see Lockenbar 
and he saw that brick kitchen and was just amazed at how well preserved it was with the, the two big fireplaces and all the metal work and so forth. And Miss Fontaine told me that Bilbo said, Miss Fontaine, sell your watch if you have to, but save that building. <laughs> And she said her answer to that was, well, uh, Governor, we do not have enough watches. <laughs> <laughs> were, were there other outbuildings on, on the property that you found no, that foundations? No, that, that was the only other building. That was, well, at that time, yeah. of course, they were slave quarters. Uh, and they have, rotted down. I have some pictures of some of the old slave oh, quarters. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, were the slaves buried on the on the property? Well, or? it's fu funny. I'm glad you mentioned that. Everybody, everybody, I appreciate all the questions and comments and so forth because it brings up something that I should tell you about. Colonel James Gordon had three children by what has been said to be a Indian woman that worked in Rock and Roll. And I, I found out about this, that uh, he, he had a son and two two daughters by this uh, Miss Law. I, I, I found finally found a picture of this lady. And she doesn't look like an Indian. <laughs> <laughs> and I suspect that uh, that's just a story. Uh -huh. uh, oh, the it, colonel was Robert's well, son. Like He's the Indian. one that was a Civil War colonel. If, if you would, we've got everybody right here. Tell him just briefly about him going off to war and fighting and, and getting a sword. And that's why Lock and Lar is here today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we can all I'll, hear. I'll, sh I'll show you the sword. But I, Colonel Gordon, uh, he was uh, Second Mississippi Cavalry. James uh, Hudia. And uh, he was in, I think, 22 or 23 battles. First, he went to Virginia, and then he came back home to form a regiment of uh, cavalry. And, and then he was in battles all over Tennessee and so forth. And. Uh, at the Battle of Thompson Station up in Middle Tennessee, uh, my wife and I had visited the spot and read all the historical markers and so forth. But anyway, he was with uh, uh, Forrest and Van Dorn. And they captured 1,100 Union prisoners in that Battle of Thompson Station. And Colonel Gordon's troop was assigned the duty of transporting those 1,100 Union prisoners from Thompson Station to Tullahoma, Tennessee, which was General Bragg's headquarters was located in uh, 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 Tullahoma at that time. It's a distance of about 50 miles, and it was in the wintertime and rainy and cold, so it was a bad trip. But Colonel Gordon, being the fine gentleman that I found him to be in all my research. He treated his prisoners very kindly, tried to keep them fed, uh, did everything he could to make the trip as, as easy for himself and his troop and, uh, and also the prisoners as possible. Uh, to such an extent that the senior union officer in this Group, uh, in this group of 1,100 Union prisoners, a General Coburn from Indianapolis, Indiana, was so impressed with uh, Colonel Gordon's consideration and kindness in treatment of the prisoners that when he turned them over to General Cheatham at, uh, at Tullahoma, this Union General Coburn asked for permission to present his sword to, to Colonel Gordon for his kindness and consideration. And Colonel Gordon sent that sword home to his wife, Virginia, here. And also Coburn had, had written him a note of 
appreciation for your kindness. Mm. Well, Colonel Gordon sent the note and the sword home to his wife, Virginia, here at Lock and Pull. And when Grierson made his famous raid, probably the most famous Union cavalry raid of the entire war, from LaGrange, Tennessee, right straight down through the state of Mississippi, down as far as Baton Rouge, Louisiana, which was in Union hands at that time. And the purpose of that purpose of that raid was that Sherman was beginning his march to Atlanta, to Atlanta. Mm -hmm. and he knew that old Nathan Bedford Forrest was going to raid the hell out of his you know, his supply lines mm -hmm. up around Chattanooga and Nashville, and he wanted to get Nathan Bedford occupied here. He was he was here in Mississippi and Arkansas and Tennessee. Uh, he wanted to get him occupied so that he wouldn't be raiding his supply line. And he ordered, uh, <coughs> Grant ordered someone to come down through Mississippi and, and cut the southern rail line at Union Station which was supplying, was supplying all the Confederate troops in Vicksburg. That was the purpose of Grierson's raid. Mm -hmm. And <coughs> he, uh, I have a book, uh, Grierson's Raid, and uh, every day he t told what happened at, uh, each, each of the days. And he came through Pontotoc, and he sent his best friend and ad an adjutant, Lieutenant Samuel Lippincott Woodward, up to Lockenvar with a troop to uh, raid it for supplies, if not to burn it. And Virginia saw, his wife Virginia saw the, the, uh, Woodward and his troop approaching on, at Lockenvar. She, she had the good sense. Of, Maybe she had been told by Colonel Gordon, use this sword and this note if there's any raids on Rock and Bar, it might, mm -hmm. might come in handy. But anyway, she had the good sense to get that General Coburn sword and the note that he had uh, given Colonel Gordon. And she got the sword and the note and met Lieutenant, Lieutenant Woodward troop out on the grounds of Rock and Bar. And Woodward read the note and saw the sword and he was so impressed that he did not raid the place. He even posted a guard to make sure that no straggler raided mm -hmm. Rock and Bar. Mm -hmm. And I have it in Colonel Gordon's own word that that act of kindness that, that they uh, brought produced this sword and the note was what saved Lockenfall because mm -hmm. it's, it's, mm -hmm. only, it's the only antebellum home that survived the war in this mm -hmm. whole general area. Mm -hmm. And there was a lot of, a lot of uh, uh, Union activity uh, mm -hmm. down, yeah. down this road. They have made a, they made a movie about Gre this Grierson's raid. The title of it is Horse Soldier. Yeah, John Wayne. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, uh, mm -hmm. and Horse, Horse and, Soldier. John Wayne. Oh, okay. And John John Wayne plays the part of Colonel Grierson in, in the movie. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. The, the uh, editor of the Commercial Appeal said from his, uh, I guess his holdout in Holly Springs or something during that time, that it was a shame that they let him march the full length of Mississippi and nobody fired a shot at him in anger. Did, did he have any military excursions of any kind? Yeah, he did, but, but he was, I mean, this was a really a well-planned raid. They knew exactly what they were oh, going to do. They came through Pontotoc and they had a, had a lot of people that were disabled and injured and that it was holding up the, they were moving as fast as they could to, to try to stay away from Confederate forces that were gathered. And they came through Pontotoc, 
and camped a little way south of Lock and Bar. And they sent the injured people that were holding up the speed of the raid. They marched them back through the town of Pontotoc, telling them to make as much noise as they could possibly make to give the impression that the entire troop was going back to LaGrange, Tennessee. Uh, and then the, the ones that were could travel fast went for the fast, yeah. fast as they could. And but and they had some encounters with Confederate uh, forces along along the way. But uh, they they were 700 uh, troopers in in his in Grissom's. When when they left uh, Lagrange. They went to Ripley. Was that they the come way? through Ripley? Ripley, 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 Ripley and yeah. through New Albany, yeah. and then on to Pontotoc. Did they just cut cross country when they went from Lagrange to Ripley? Because there was no roads, I guess. Yeah, yeah, they had a Lagrange, Ripley, 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 Lagrange. Grant, Grant Graves about that road goes from Lagrange to Ripley. Yeah, Lagrange Ripley Road. Mm -hmm. Pleasant Hill, Doctor Two, Ashland County. Ah, uh, now, uh, uh, Colonel Gordon. He lost the property in 1896, is that correct? About 1890 or 91. 91, okay. All right, you said the Fontaines didn't move in until 1926. That's right. What about that time span in between there? You're exactly right. You, you, you were listening to it. Yeah. That's, well, that's I also right. read your damn Colonel, book. Read your damn book. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> you told everybody here about yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. We, I, I don't know if, they, if Bill and them heard. We, we met Dr. Tudor one night. We, a bunch of the Tip Tigers went down to Tupelo to meet in their uh, uh, camp, and he was a speaker that night. And he gave a speech, and on the whole time, he, he had this book, and he was looking at it, and he'd read poetry or passages out of it when he became a senator. And at the end of the thing, Bobby Joe was real interested. He was, and he and he said, "What did you get all this information?" He said, "From this book." And 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 uh, uh, no, no, I asked him. I said, "Where did you get the book?" Yeah. Yeah. And and, and, and Doctor Tudor, Tudor said, he and looked said, at me and he looked at the I, book I, and he looked I, back at me. He said, "I wrote the damn thing." And that statement right there, I believe, I is the reason that everybody is here right say, now. Uh -huh. To say that until later, and I regretted having said that. <laughs> <laughs> I made it okay with Billy Joe. Anyway, now, now there's about four copies. It, it, worked, it worked out great. Yeah. 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 Is the book still available? Oh, yeah. yeah. You can get it at the Pontotac Library. Yeah. 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 Down, downtown. Don't go to the one out there on the yeah. edge of town. You've got to go downtown. You have to use the expletive when you ask for it. That's the library. You have to use the expletive when you ask for it. No, no, no. I prefer that you not. Yeah, I turned it. I turned it over to the historical, Pontotoc County Historical Society. They have a little book shop there in the museum. And I wanted them to benefit any mm -hmm. financial What's return the from name, it. Uh, huh? What's that lady's name? Coleman. I've been, uh, been well Coleman. pleased. What's We've had to reorder twice, I mm -hmm. guess. Margaret, uh, great. That's uh, a good book. Uh, if, you, uh, if, you, uh, if you don't want to, uh, we've got it, you can read it, man. It's uh, got a, got a it's, uh, it just there. brings all this <laughs> into it, It's a result of 40 years of research. Yeah. Uh, Mm. Uh, now, and I really an did. In, I really did enjoy finally getting it all together mm. and telling the story. Uh, now, this time frame in there. This oh, oh we, yeah, we yeah, got yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, <laughs> I, I got you. Uh, yeah, uh, old Robert built the house in 1836, and then he became very wealthy had these thousands and thousands of acres of land. This plantation here was only one of five large plantations that he had. Mm. Down in, had one down in Chickasaw Co County, Monroe County, uh, a couple of them. And then he had, a, later on, he had a big plantation down in Mississippi Delta that he bought for James, his son, to move down there. But anyway, 
when when the war was Robert and his wife Mary Elizabeth left Lockenbar during the war and moved to some of their property in Oklahoma. Uh, Y'all know where Oklahoma mm -hmm. is because there were so many raids on, on the place that fe feared for their life, and he left it as a rental house. And Robert stayed on in uh, Oklahoma and died in Oklahoma in uh, 1867. But before he died, he asked to be brought back here and buried with his daughter, Joanna. And, and this was done. When Colonel Gordon came back from the war, he, he moved in, to, he and his wife moved into Lockham. And, and Ms. Ms. Gordon, uh, Mayor Elizabeth, Robert's wife, she, uh, she died in 1869, two years after Robert had died in 1867. But she moved into the house with James and his wife after Robert died. So that's how the three people the, the daughter Joanna and Robert and Mary Elizabeth got buried here. Mm -hmm. uh, now getting around to the to the dates, Colonel Gordon, uh, you know, I, I, I think I have a pretty good basis for this belief that the <laughs> oh, that's, just, that's Bill Baker. Oh, good gracious. Sure. I thought I had me a quail. Huh? There's a little light for uh, that. Uh, but, oh, look. <laughs> the dates. Colonel Gordon started selling off large amounts of surrounding land to hold on to any, uh, to the lock and lock. I've, I think I have pretty good evidence of the fact that the black Republicans blame the southern aristocracy for the war. Oh, yeah. Probably, mm -hmm. rightly, Absolutely. probably rightly so because of the slave mm -hmm. situation. Right. Mm -hmm. And they were determined that the South was going to play, pay the piper. Mm -hmm. Yep. And they, they knew that the best way for them to get rid of this Southern aristocracy that was on, owning all of these huge tracts of land was to raise the taxes on the land. And, and that's when all these big plantations started disintegrating. Mm -hmm. And Colonel Gordon was able to hold on to Lock and Var and surrounding properties much longer than most of the large plantation houses because he had so damn much land. Mm -hmm. uh, he, he could sell off 2,000 acres and pay his taxes until mm -hmm. next year and he'd have to sell off. Was he selling off to the carpet baggers or the locals or I do you know? I don't, I don't know okay. but I, I, I'm Maybe sure it was, ending, it was ending up as, as carpet right, baggers. Right, yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. But anyway, he, uh, he was able to hold on to Lockenvar and some of the land uh, un until uh, 19 uh, or 18 well anyway I'll, I'll get back to that but he uh, ended up leaving Lockenvar with everything that he owned on a one horse wagon and a dollar and forty two cents in his pocket after having been the richest young man in North Mississippi. Mm -hmm. And he claimed that he went away whistling. Mm -hmm. And I I know enough about the guy's character that <clears throat> that I could believe that he, he was uh, just an amazing mm -hmm. individual. And he was mainly the reason that uh, that I wanted to write the book. Uh, more, I have a lot more interest and respect for Colonel Gordon 
than I have for Robert. Robert feathered his own nest at, at, at the expense of the black man and the, and the red man. Mm -hmm. but, uh, Colonel Gordon was entirely a different uh, character, mm -hmm. than, character than his father. Y'all want to go back up to the house? But, uh, the, uh, the room? No, he, 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 he's not through yet. Oh, yeah. he, he hasn't got to 1926 <laughs> <yet>. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. He, uh, he, he left Lockenvar in 18... It just slips my mind. I'm sorry. Uh, but anyway... Around 1891 or two. Yeah, he, he, uh, he and his son went to Oklahoma and hired out as farm hands. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he finally uh, formed a little day, uh, cattle dairy. Dairy, yeah. Dairy. He wanted some cows to start his dairy. He came up and rustled some of his own cows. cows. Mm -hmm. the, the Lloyds of London Insurance Company owned the property. Uh -huh. He came up and rustled some of his cow own cattle and started the, the, the dairy. Okay, now that wasn't in the book. <laughs> well, it should have been. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but uh, he, uh, there, there's that period of about 10 years, 10 or 15 years, I, I don't know exactly, but the house was uh, either a rental house or a bootlegging joint or a dance hall. All mm, those yeah. years it was, it was vacant. Everybody was using it. Nobody was taking care of it. And that's when Ms. Fontaine saw that if anybody was ever going to save it, they better get busy. Uh, so they bought that, that Fontaine family bought it, and they bought out. They moved out here mm -hmm. and started working on it. So, so that yeah. that is how that coming on up a lot of years. But how much damage did you sustain in this tornado? Oh, man. You know? You'll see pictures. You'll, oh, you'll, 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 get, you'll get to see that right there. I, I catfish. I did not think it was possible for mm -hmm. anyone to ever build really well. anything. Well, I'll show, I've got an album. I'll show you all mm -hmm. the pictures of this. And mm -hmm. uh, well, let's let's go hunt another dark spot. <laughs> <laughs> well, he probably got some up with you. Somebody had some bottled water. I forgot who it was. That, that's what now? I'll see if I can read it. Okay. It says it's the Chickasaw King and Queen, whatever that means. <laughs> but he said it. He said they wasn't there. Nearly anywhere out here. 
Yeah. And maybe that's just a sort of a... Might be walking over 40 acres or a thousand. Okay. Good. Hey, doggy. How far was this from the cemetery to his house? 2.7. I mean, 0.27. Oh, okay. Oh, Don't bother me a bit. <laughs> 